and without fixing the quality uh, the uh, standards we cannot make uh, happen that the quality seed is made available to the farmer so the processing and the treatment the treatment is different and the processing could be cleaning processing is required still in for the land races and the pelleting may be the kind of treatment soil treatment uh, uh, or clay uh, molding of the seeds is uh, very useful and packaging and storage is also important but we need not uh, uh, the except for the gene banks uh, most of the uh, crops which are hardy three to four years uh, seed storage without losing viability with a simple rural technologies is extremely possible viability need not be compromised in land races we can have the same kind of things and seed sales should be production distribution and uh, uh, it will should be locally done instead of uh, uh, targeting the large areas or the entire state uh, given a district uh, which is uh, equally uh, good performing varieties identified for that district uh, should be locally produced and locally distributed and when it comes to the conservation uh, of course when we come to the conservation of the seed the most important thing is in situ on farm conservation that means conservation through use it's not actually conservation by putting into the banks but on the field and by use you can really conserve conservation is more important uh, for uh, land races and for the traditional varieties and in situ conservation which are uh, grown along with the wild species wild relatives land races growing in the same area and when the changing climate is there there is always co evolution the variety develops over a period of time and those which are best fit that will be surviving and that kind of uh, uh, the on farm gardens are also internationally being now talked about and certain areas are coming where the wild relatives and land races to be grown together and then we can get it one such example for rice exists in assam also for us in addition to citrus garden there so we have field gene banks for conservation purpose we still can use and then one of the best ways to start with by any state which is promoting or by any district authority or atma which is promoting the land races the source can be nbpgr you have to see the uh, the database and find out uh, which are the varieties collected by nbpgr about 30 40 years back which were performing very well or valued for protein content or fiber content or any other uh, value of the taste even for the taste and the people would like to reuse it then bringing from there making an evaluation and uh, putting a, a fixed a traits a group of traits for that particular land race fixing the quality standards and then using it is possible so though there are a huge number of uh, options available for conservation the most important is on farm in situ conservation along with the wild uh, relatives of the crops for maintaining the crop standards then in addition to this we also have the source which we have not uh, uh, no need to exploit right now but when there is an issue uh, the indian around 524 plant taxa and around 73000 varieties of seeds have been stored in the swalbird global seed vault which is uh, uh, automatic without any electricity minus 40 degrees centigrade exists there and uh, more than 6000 species are uh, conserved there and out of the indian origin 524 and 73000 are there and in the world there are about 750 gene banks in the 100 countries and 7.4 million seed samples are conserved in the swalbird global seed vault not to talk of this you can also see our own that means locally collected the seeds are available in the international gene bank in the cgir as well as the world vegetable center or certain international gene banks we have got more than 8 million seed samples stored there so in a, in effect just i would like to share with you that uh, the working group uh, on the seed systems uh, with the rram uh, has tried to uh, approach the nbpjr and said the varieties in the uh, seed bank were contributed by the farmers now farmer associations uh, want to uh, try those varieties in their fields 
can you please share it? The general uh, procedure for the NDPGR is unless you are registered with the uh, Department of Science and Industrial Research as a research organization, they don't share the germplasm from the gene bank. We have uh, broken that rule. Now they already shared that uh, varieties from the NDPGR, example is for Karnataka and where uh, even from Andhra Pradesh, he selected certain varieties which are on demand collected 40 years back by the NVPGR. We brought them back and the Sahaja uh, that Krishna Prasad is actually helping us in evaluating and multiplying these, uh, not only paddy, millet, brinjal, and a few crops we got. And this is a new process established for the natural farming associations or, uh, that we can get some seed initially from the NVPGR, multiply it and use it for the farmer networks, those land research. Then uh, we have the, I uh, very briefly uh, explain uh, the seed system for uh, uh, which we have developed uh, for the Varista Millet Mission. So these are the standardizing land races uh, characters. There are certain descriptors uh, which we will define that particular land race. Evaluation will be done, particularly with reference to the yield, with reference to the pest resistance nutritional value, climate resilience, and minimum, uh, actually no chemical inputs. Then we have the seed standards or guidelines are being developed by talking to the people who are actually using it, the communities, they are giving certain uh, ideas on how to take it forward for the seed standards and uh, package of practices are developed for these land races. Then we can uh, take it to the uh, next level by notification through an apex committee at the state level, which the Odisha has agreed. And then if it is good, then this apex committee can submit it to the CVRC also. And then women self-help groups and farmer producer organizations are actually part of this process in quality seed production. So what we want is uh, the farmers should be able to select the variety which they want uh, for their area. And that seed should be uh, quality seed should be produced and we are also uh, not actually putting the formal organizations uh, away from this process. The seed certification agencies can be part of it. They can guide the women's health, health groups as well as the farmer producer organizations and uh, they can uh, take it uh, formal. Then uh, the standard operating protocols are defined uh, but the best part of this system is that there will be no exclusive rights to any particular individual or groups or villages. They will remain in the public domain. They can be put even in the Opel digital seed platform where any farmer interested, of course at a cost, can access those seeds and can grow them. Then we have a state level apex committee and land variety subcommittee also can be formed, which will compare, similar process will be followed, but uh, large number of farmer field trials verified by the state government cropping experiments will also be considered as a data instead of a few centers of the ACRP or state centers. It can be the farmer's data is also considered here and then it, they will be helpful in uh, taking it forward. Then uh, capacity building of the farmer collectives or FPOs will be done in this process and uh, uh, the certification manual will be developed, which will be different from the improved varieties. Then we also have uh, the in Orissa state seed testing laboratory is there, which has got uh, uh, actually the uh, conservation facility uh, as a reference bank for all the day, land races will be there. And this repository should be converted into the local language and the farmers can choose based on the traits evaluated and the data is stored there. And if the adequate budget has been agreed to be provided for this, uh, and then uh, there is a, uh, we, the best part of the system that we have proposed is that uh, all the public institutional infrastructure will be utilized in this particular uh, system. That means when we go to a particular district, if there is a KVK, or if there is a uh, agricultural uh, research station uh, where some breeders are available, they can help us in developing the package of practices. They can help us in developing the seed and field standards. 
and the Indian Institute of Seed Research has come forward to help in this particular uh, effort. And then, uh, based on that, uh, the source seed, quality seed, will be made available to the farmers. And these farmers can locally develop the seed and distribute the seed locally. So this open source digital platform will contain all the details and preferably it should be translated into the local language which people can see it and select it which variety they have to go. Then uh, land race seed centers will be uh, developed and also the para seed certifiers at the village level will be developed by the existing seed certification agencies in association with the universities so that the seed certification process is simplified, defined and uh, they can be done at the local level without uh, waiting for uh, an expert team to come and certify the seed. So the quality is maintained and the local capacity is built so that uh, we will be able to uh, take it uh, these varieties forward. And uh, how do we get all these varieties? The biodiversity blocks concept uh, has been done at the Wasan and RRAN. This is extremely helpful that in spite of 30, 40 years operation of the germplasm collection by the National Institute, still huge gaps are there of the land races available, which are, did not reach the gene bank, but they can be made available to the communities. So by conducting the melas, by prioritizing the crops for that region, and also the land races for that region, developing the seed and field standards, and also isolation distance being defined, and if it is a multi-crop system, that also, if it is self-pollinated, you can come up with a system where quality seed can be uh, produced. And the, the genetic purity definition will change based on the principal trait of that land race. If the taste is the main thing, then we will see the taste as the indicator. And if it is the duration is the indicator, that uh, purpose will be taken into the land race. And these uh, farmers will select and uh, will visit these blocks, select it, and some research and innovation, rural intelligence will be used, locally produced seed, locally consumed. We have the uh, conclusion uh, that uh, the farmer seed sovereignty in natural farming system is the most important thing. The very basic principle of natural farming is the external dependency should be the least. So the farmer should be able to develop his own variety for his region, more than one crop if wants to grow. So which are the best suited for that uh, uh, system of cropping that he is taking, he can select it, follow the alternate seed system, get this entity of the quality of the seed that should be made available. And uh, in order to do this, we need a critical mass of uh, ara seed certified should be developed, locally produced and locally consumed. Farmer seed sovereignty is achieved. Thank you very much for this uh, uh, time given to me. And uh, I think the topic is open for uh, discussion. Uh, yeah. We need some uh, uh, local varieties of seed for uh, farmers or our production. How can we get it? Uh, yeah, that's actually uh, two or three approaches. One approach is uh, actually which are the state gene banks or national gene banks. Now, as I told you, the NBPGR is open to share with the farmer networks the seed that you require. They may not be able to give you in kgs or uh, huge quantities. Oh, okay, yeah. a small quantity. Yeah, yeah now, uh, Dr. Varaprasad, it was a beautiful presentation. And uh, I happened to see after many years. I was in NARM, sir. Now I'm in IHR Bangalore, Jairam Gundarao, principal oh, scientist. Oh. Yeah, Man myself, sir. Yeah, sir, I have just two, three questions. You see, in extension, in extension, you know, we uh, we, we follow this other, other that uh, innovator, Lagarde and all that. If one person starts doing, everybody wants to profit. See, now the natural, the first question is, I have written in the chat box also, can we force a farmer who wish to venture into industrial farming using hybrids or natural farming is only for poor farmers and uh, these sort of people who cannot afford the high risk and cost? Our natural farming should be imposed on all. This is the first question. Because in uh, extension and farmers, you know, just like sheep, if one fellow has brought a new variety from somewhere, uh, everybody would like to try and they also want to become a big farmer and all that. Second question is, there are, especially in horticulture, I've been saying, we have avocado, we have got uh, dragon fruit. See, many are all 
from the uh, it has been imported into the country and there's a lot of success stories of polyos aquaponics and soilless media oriented cultivation of high value crop this is triggering some sort of unhealthy competition and people are not going into the so called natural farming so i feel it is a greed versus need and then you know like the khadi movement you know the atmanirbhar bharat with natural farming movement should be uh, brought about uh, i think that's what uh, uh, the prime minister and we are all trying for that and lastly are you indicating that a gi in natural farming that when you say that some variety is suitable only for tribal high altitude and all that so uh, of course gi is for a district but we can go even further and say that a particular taluk should uh, take place of only these varieties that's all from my side thank you uh, uh, thank you thank you and uh, very valid comments ours being a democratic country absolutely <laughs> what what the prime minister says need not be followed by everybody it's a it happens and then it's not that uh, even for the green revolution if you see till today as i said 40% of area the technologies did not reach they are still we are trying to the so called extension has not penetrated into some areas where it is not reaching same way natural farming it's not a overnight exercise it doesn't change so that is why what i told is one is the rain fed areas second is high altitude tribal areas and why i am saying this i am saying this because the penetration of the chemical inputs is lesser in these areas compared to the irrigated agriculture so if we want to show to the world that the natural farming works the productivity as well as the economics farmer income is not adversely affected these are the areas to start with to influence it so over by a pen stroke you can't bring natural farming across the country this is a, a it is a fact which we need to agree and it takes time it takes time even if uh, but the reality is uh, the data globally shows that wherever chemical agriculture has uh, uh, actually invaded in a big way the soil is spoiled soil health is spoiled the water quality has gone down even uh, the air quality has come, come down climate aberrations have come very significantly which our uh, new varieties are not able to withstand so that's why i am suggesting that it's not by rule or by act but by preference we can always bring and demonstrate and bring it to the farmers so when it comes to the industrial agriculture see as i told you there will be a space always for the industrial agriculture you can't actually completely remove the hydroponics or remove the industrial production so there is some space available but what we are largely concerned with the natural farming is are we improving our soil health which is basic for our human health as well as animal health are we improving the water quality or with the available water can we bring more production and uh, is it uh, the breathing air is much better or not so these are the uh, some responses that i give thank you just uh, uh, dr jay right no, sir, sir, no, one last thing sir. for example yeah. the palakkad matta rice is grown only in the palakkad district so there it is a ga it is an indication done okay similarly when you say some tribal areas high altitude areas or you know even minor villages so the flavor and the production not only productivity the flavor of a particular crop you told that in basmati there are so many races which can do it so why not recommend it uh, just like wadop or something or gi or you can call it by any name because i am i am not getting the name what to call so that is uh, specific to a particular uh, geographical area and uh, when you get it uh, the premium prices also should be fetched that is where the extension and economics we have the problem so but once when the breeder says that this is only for a particular area that flavor is going to come whether uh, basmati or in telangana you told that red rice which has a flavor so why not we promote it in that area uh, like a gi yeah actually gi is uh, something not uh, restricted to agriculture alone it can be for weaving it can be for a laddu tirupati laddu or it can be for <laughs> yeah. anything right so yeah. actually when you make in that geographic region you get that right for the societies but right. what we what we i am trying to impress upon is that uh, india is predominantly agriculture country 
and we have got a lot of variation in soil climate and water across the country and each ecosystem has got its own uniqueness and over thousands of years we have developed some varieties which are lying in the seed bed or which are lying with only for self consumption the small holder farmers who in spite of any, when we actually surveyed in orissa they said uh, okay this is what is this variety this is given by the government so whatever government may give this variety we are uh, not going to leave isko chhodne wala nahi hai kyunki ye yahi hum khate hain yahi hum khate so usko khane ke liye they have got some high quality varieties which are suitable to that area that soil so what we want is not actually gi but what we want is which are adapted to that climate to that soil if there are already available with the interior areas with the farmers and in the gene banks bring them mainstream them so that uh, the natural farming also gets a higher productivity as you very rightly said the branding will bring them income brand actually we will not be gi but branding okay, will so, yeah so we can go for branding and also i mean can we make a, that that statement i didn't get the answer can we say that natural farming is for the poor people for the small and marginal farmers who cannot afford the risk because we say that uh, low input external uh, input agriculture l e i a you know that's a big concept so can we say like that i don't know no, because can no, we make no, a statement no. like that no no not at all not at all because there are already a large number of farmers who are uh, more than 100 acres they are practicing by commercially producing the natural inputs that means for jeevamrutam gana jeevamrutam they are actually adopting the machinery to because for <laughs> such a large area so there is uh, equipment already available uh, even in the uh, online also natural. equipment is available so you show natural farming also has become an industry today yeah <laughs> it has become that an is. industry because we have so yes. many things thank you very much sir yeah. sir master drausa patil just uh, i had come across that hybrid variety are to be restricted for the natural farming uh, why it is so Yeah, yeah. Because so it's every, it's every, every seed is hybrid seed. Every seed is hybrid seed, as per the definition. Unless hybridization is there, no seed is formation there. Whether it is cell pollinated, whether it is cross pollinated, often cross pollinated, or whatever it may be. But there should be pollination, and it should be hybrid one. It is a fun hybrid every time. Then why we are restricting the hybrid seed for the natural farming? It's a good question because this is asked many times. and that's one of the reasons why actually seed debate is little in the normal uh, natural farming compared to other areas of uh, package of practices in case of seed let me tell you that sir uh, yeah. is, of course i disagree with that uh, every seed is a hybrid seed because uh, we are traditionally in india use the same variety for several years and if it is f1 next season itself you cannot use it so the hybrid technology is such that uh, the dependency is increased that means uh, the very basic principle of natural farming is that the dependency should be reduced to minimum so that uh, it will have the seed sovereignty so in case of uh, hybrid seed uh, i will tell you in case of maize the hybrids are more popular than the land seeds char okay so in case of maize there were experiments uh, then these uh, in the selection process uh, that's how we have uh, seen that the only such genotypes are selected which are responsive to irrigation responsive to fertilizer so if you bring such a hybrid which is actually needs lot of water and lot of fertilizer and lot of chemicals uh, pesticides or pesticides and you try to apply the natural farming it will be disappointing whereas in the same place we have uh, more than 50000 uh, land races in maize also uh, the simit simit has got a large collection of the maize and even in india northeast india we have got excellent uh, land races available in the maize so these land races are not input responsive that means they do not uh, demand the fertilizer they do not uh, demand the uh, their uh, poietic stresses uh, resistance is very high pest is normally very less even otherwise in the maize it is less so when hybrid is used and you suddenly withdraw all the uh, 
uh, inputs which are required for it and right. your soil health is such that it cannot uh, through existing nutrient cycle it cannot supply its requirement then the crop will be a failure so that is the reason why land races needs to be promoted not the hybrids or the gsx yes. yeah but uh, if there are uh, certain crops where actually you know the natural right. farming initially what they say is it is seed neutral seed I neutral Ah, that means whatever <laughs> seed you, whatever <laughs> seed you grow, the agronomy should be such that you get the same bean. But exactly. stabilization will take a lot of time. When we are thinking for natural farming, we also yeah. think for the income generating activities, income for the farmer. Yeah. When, when he is not getting income, that farming will not sustain. Hundred uh, percent right. Hundred percent right. For that, what I am saying is. That uh, in Andhra Pradesh, our experience of AP community natural farming is, it takes uh, even a particular farmer yes. takes about five years to come to natural farming fully. Five years. First year he will uh, be very skeptical. He will not agree. Second year he may put a half acre. Then if he finds something, he may little I bit know. expand. Then he will find that I am putting a lot of effort, but the income is not sufficient because yield is less. So the the transformation is a slow process, slow process. So we don't expect that the zero hybrid seed should be used, zero improved variety should be used. We are not saying that, but uh, uh, the it takes uh, is a slow process. Land races, if we start using it, and if your soil health is good, it will yield more than the improved varieties. That's okay. by experience. Okay. I am telling from the Orissa. Where the land is not spoiled, soil is not spoiled, water is uh, good. Even by default, they don't apply fertilizers, so the yield is more in land races compared to even the improved varieties. Otherwise, the same improved variety in irrigated conditions, double yield will come. But when in these conditions, the land race is performing better than the improved variety. You are facing, have, you are facing I, two yeah. problems now. One is for yeah. doubling farmer income, and another in natural farming. So crisis yeah. is there. Then we have to meet out all these activities. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, that's a, one of the reasons why I highlighted in the beginning that uh, the sector where you are actually focusing for natural farming, the high high returns will be there if you uh, rain fed farming if you concentrate, and if you concentrate on high altitude tribal farm, these two areas you get very quickly results. Because already it is low input and low income, and if they follow this system, their income will definitely will increase. So, and this question is very valid. I agree with you. That is the reason why the manage is also oriented. That can we pay for the ecosystem services by not using the chemicals, by not using the using less water, and by not using the pesticides. You are uh, helping the society, but not yourself. So, can we pay some ecosystem services that you are contributing the, to the sustainability to the soil health, which is beyond your capacity, income capacity right now? Can we give some service to it? And you are actually uh, increasing the carbon credits in your area by not applying these things by using less energy, less water. So, can we give some ecosystem service payment to the farmers who are using this? That can be one of the ways, immediate ways, to compensate and promote the health of the animals as well as human beings.